Catalytic hydrogenation, sometimes called catalytic reduction, that'll be the topic of this lesson. And uh, effectively, we're going to add two hydrogens from one molecule of molecular hydrogen across an alkene, effectively turning an alkene into an alkane. Now, when you add two of the same thing to an alkene, there is no regioselectivity, so there's no Markovnikov or anti Markovnikov to talk about. Uh, but we'll find out that this is a syn addition for the stereoselectivity. Uh, it does not go through any sort of carbocation intermediate. In fact, we don't know the mechanism perfectly ourselves as well, it turns out, so you won't have to know the mechanism for this one. Uh, but you will have to know that it is indeed a syn addition. Uh, finally, we'll conclude this lesson talking about what are called the heats of hydrogenation. These reactions are exothermic, and depending on how substituted your alkene is, you can predict which are going to be the most exothermic and potentially compare relative heats of hydrogenation. Now, this is part of my new organic chemistry playlist. I'll be releasing these lessons weekly throughout the 2020-21 school year. So if you don't want to miss one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. You'll be notified every time I post a new lesson. Our next alkene addition reaction is going to be catalytic hydrogenation. And catalytic hydrogenation occurs when you add H2 with an appropriate metal catalyst, typically palladium, platinum, or nickel. So here we've got a common example. And with our palladium catalyst, that's palladium on carbon or palladium on charcoal or something along those lines, common form of palladium we use for these reactions. And we're going to add an H and an H. And because we're adding a two of the same thing, so there is no regioselectivity to talk about. It's not like, well, which side gets the H and which side gets the H? Like when we added HBr, we added H. Who gets the H and who gets the Br? But if you're adding two of the same thing, then there is no uh, regioselectivity, no Markovnikov, no anti-Markovnikov to talk about it. So however, there is stereoselectivity here, and it is a syn addition, as we'll see. All right, so we don't exactly know the mechanism of this reaction, which is a beautiful thing, because if we don't know the mechanism, then you don't have to know the mechanism. So we kind of have an idea of, you know, maybe how it goes and stuff, but we're not sure. So it turns out that hydrogen is going to adsorb to the surface of one of our metal catalysts here, and it turns out that weakens the hydron-hydron bond. So, and our alkene is going to line up to add both hydrons at the same time here from the same molecule of H2. And because we're adding both hydrons at the same time from the same molecule, they have to add to the same face. So, and that's what makes this a syn addition. So I'm only showing this so that we understand why it's a syn addition. So, but other time we saw syn addition was with BH3 and we added both the boron and the hydrogen at the same time from the same molecule, which is again, the exact same reason they added to the same face. So we can explain why this is syn addition. So let's take a look at a couple examples. And in this case, there's no mechanism to show. We're just gonna predict the products. And so in this first one, if we add an H to both sides, we just simply turn an alkene into an alkane. And so a lot of students just think, oh yeah, it takes the double bond away. Well, again, it adds two H's. We don't draw them in, but they both got added there. So this is technically also called a reduction. Some people even call the reaction catalytic reduction. So when you're adding hydrogens. So, uh, but that'll be more important later on. So if we take a look at a, a more creative example here. So we didn't form any chiral centers here. We're about to in this one though. So in this case, H2. And again, we like to think that I uh, made the alkene disappear. But again, we added a hydrogen to both sides. So, but this is not going to be sufficient now. So this carbon's got four different groups. He's got the methyl carbon. These two carbons are different. And he's now got a hydrogen. Same thing. This carbon's got the ethyl carbon. These two carbons, which are unique. And then a hydrogen as well. And we formed two chiral centers. Now, this is the first example we've looked at where we formed two chiral centers. And again, when you form two chiral centers, you may get as many as four products. So, but if you have stereoselectivity, you're only going to get two out of the four typically. So in this case, this is syn addition. We're only going to get the two syn products. And what this means is that the two hydrogens we added, added to the same face, the same side of the molecule, both wedges or both dashes. So let's say I made them both dashes. Well, if they're both dashes, that would mean that our methyl and our ethyl are both wedges, and that would be one of the products. But again, the two hydrons could have been both on the wedge side, which would mean that my methyl and ethyl are both on the dashed positions. And so we get this racemic mixture right here, two products. Cool. And those would be our two sin products. Now, one thing to be careful of, and this question shows up pretty commonly here. So it's an example worth noting. Instead of having a methyl and an ethyl there on our cyclohexane, let's just say we had two methyls and we did exactly the same reaction. 
And so you might be inclined to, again, draw both wedges and both dashes. And this time you're going to lose some points, unfortunately. So we did indeed still form two chiral centers. There's still both chiral centers. But see that mirror plane of symmetry? This is an achiral molecule. Specifically, it is a meso compound. And this and this are exactly the same meso compound, just flipped over. But they're exactly the same. And so when you form a meso compound in one of these reactions, so when you form two chiral centers, you're not going to get as many products as you think. So normally when you've got syn addition and two chiral centers, you get two products but not if you form a meso compound. Just draw one of the two. If you draw them both, in all likelihood, you're losing points. Okay. One last thing we got to look at with hydrogenation. So uh, oftentimes we use this as a way of characterizing alkenes that we're doing the hydrogenation reaction on. So it turns out that when we hydrogenate an alkene so and turn it into an alkane, it is always going to be an exothermic reaction. So that's the first off, but there are varying degrees of how exothermic it's going to be. And we call the amount of heat it releases the heat of hydrogenation. And so you might have to rank some alkenes to see how uh, exothermic are they and stuff like that. So here I've got three different alkenes that are all related that all upon hydro hydrogenation form exactly the same product. So, and I've kind of ranked them in order of uh, increasing energy here as well. So this is our most stable alkene. So the alkene is between what's going to be a tertiary and secondary carbon. So this is the second most stable. The alkene here is between what's going to be a primary and secondary carbon. And this one's the least stable, the least substitute, being between what's going to be a primary and secondary carbon. And so we learned uh, in the chapter on elimination reactions that the more substituted the alkene, the more stable. And so this is the lowest energy alkene. This is the highest energy alkene. But upon hydrogenation, they all form a lower energy alkene. And if we kind of take a look at what this might look like. So you're going to end at the same place in all three hydrogenation reactions, right at this alkane. But you're going to start at three very different energies. And the more, most substitute alkene would start at the lowest energy. And therefore, it would be the least exothermic reaction. So the next one would be a little more exothermic. And then the least substituted alkene there would have the most exothermic reaction in being reduced. And so you might have to rank these. And so we'd say that this alkene that was the least substituted that starts off the highest energy would have the highest heat of hydrogenation. It would release the most heat upon hydrogenation. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, consider giving me a like and a share. A couple of the most helpful things you can do to help promote the channel. And if you're looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, or if you're looking for practice problems for alkene addition reactions, check out my premium courses on chadsprep.com.